Yeah, so I'm going to start now because I was supposed to finish by now. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to see you all here, uh, even though there's a waffle truck outside and nobody jumped ship from you. So yeah, my talk today is going to be about how to maintain a, a diverse team. And it's a very, very broad subject and I just want to share my personal perspective and give you some keywords to improve yourselves and maybe your organization a little bit. And yeah, so let's hop in. Who am I? Um, my name is Foy Murek, my pronouns are they, them. And I work as a development advocate for a singer. We come from Germany, we've got a stand over at the main hall if you want to come and visit us. And I'm very passionate about teaching, about accessibility, inclusiveness and old cars because old cars are cool. Um, yeah, that's my Twitter handle. You'll also find it somewhere in the corner here. Um, so my perspective is very much the one of a privileged white person. Even though I'm queer, I'm from the center of Europe. So take it with a grain of salt. And I just want to give you some starting points on how to improve yourself. And first we're going to define what diversity means. Because everyone has heard of it, but what is diversity exactly? So I squished down a few different uh, definitions that I found from Wikipedia and from Miriam Webster. And I think the essence of it is the presence of a wide range of differences amongst people. So where people come together, there are going to be certain differences. And I'm going to categorize it into three different kinds. And the first one is internal diversity. Internal diversity is basically what everyone is born with or a situation they are born into. And that is something you don't choose for yourself and that's not something that you are able to change by yourself. That could be ethnicity, that could be your age or the year that you were born, your national origin, your sexual orientation, your identity, your assigned sex, your mental ability or any kind of neurodiversi neurodiversity you have or disabilities you have. There's external t diversity, which is something that you're not necessarily born with, and those can be aspects of a person that can change and often change over time. Could be personal interests, could be the kind of education that you received, your appearance, your citizenship, your location that you're based at, your familial status, all the kind of stuff that does affect you that might change and on top of that, which kind of relates to it, is professional diversity. This is the kind of um, yeah, the kind of aspects that you have that res re the, the kind of aspects about yourself that relate to your work. And those can and will change quite frequently for a lot of us. So it could be the kind of education you received in perspective to your job. Um, any conferences you visited, and knowledge you got from there, your job function, your job title how much money you make, if you have any people that work for you, if you are a person that works for someone else. And those things all play into the kind of worldview world you have. So the worldview is basically yeah, an amalgamation of the different kinds of diversity, the different kinds of aspects you have within yourselves. And a worldview is basically the kind of core principles that you hold, the views, that you build for yourself through your life. And those will naturally change over time. When you're a child, you have a very different worldview than what you have now. And those different worldviews that make up our teams are very different for every single person. Could be a political belief, your moral compass, your outlook in life. So now that we've kind of had a look at what kind of diversity I'm talking about, we want to look at the goals that we want to try to work for if we, want to go, if we are going to work together in a diverse team. And the first one is collaboration. And collaboration is a thing that can be, of course, achieved in a very samey, samey team. But it's a lot better if you have different people working together. Because it makes it a lot more easy to identify or solve challenges if you have different people from different parts of life looking at it. 
A good example that I found in my personal life or in my work life was toilet signs. So our company moved to a different office, a new office, and there was a team of architects that decided, okay, we're going to have a few different toilets across the office, and we also want gender-neutral toilets. But what are the signs going to be on the door? So, of course, we have a little person with a dress for the women's toilet, we have a little person with pants on for the men's toilet, but what are we going to do for the gender-neutral toilet? A person with half a dress? I mean, I don't look like I have half a dress on, and most other people don't really identify with half-half either. Then there's this thing I found on the internet, which is an absolute abomination. Um, Yes, very inclusive of everything, but I'm also not a mer person, I'm also not an alien. So, my boss approached me and was like, hey, Foy, you're a bit more into this kind of stuff, you know a bit about, you know, gender neutrality. What do you think, what could we use? So I suggested a very simple solution. Toilet. Um, and that's something a team of, well, binary people men and women didn't come up with because it's so far out of their comfort zone. And of course my perspective is the one of gender, which is where I'm most diverse at. But there are many, many other problems that you might never think of a solution that a team member from a different background could and would think of. Inclusiveness is another goal that I think we could all work towards. And inclusiveness in this sense means that everyone comes to work or comes into their group and feels included and loved for who they are. That they can be their true self and don't have to hide anything. Because the place I worked at before, I always had to hide certain aspects of myself, dress a certain way, because there was a dress code for men and women, and I had to wear like a pretty shirt, and I really felt uncomfortable all the way, kept thinking about my appearance, and that really took away from my productivity and my happiness. Employee satisfaction is something that naturally occurs out of inclusivity, but it also strengthens your bond with your company or the thing that, yeah, the organization you work for. And having a positive and inclusive work environment is something that we should all strive for, and that includes all people from all walks of life. And from a more business perspective, it also results in the goal of external representation. So we have a whole lot of different people that look different ways and repre representing a balance of diversity in your organization also means that you get to hire new people that you might not have hired before. A woman, woman might not want to apply to an all cis white male old team. And through hiring those diverse people you also get people that are more open-minded. If Someone who doesn't want to be in a diverse team, they will not apply there, and the people that will might fit in a lot better. The challenges of having a diverse team might not be fully solvable in all ways, but we can try and make steps to minimize the impact they have on our way of working. Communication is a big challenge, and especially when it comes to teams that have people from different languages and backgrounds, where you have a language barrier or a cultural barrier, where you might talk, think you talk about the same thing, but there's something very different in the background. In our marketing team, we have a lot of different people that speak different languages. We get all agreed to speak English in our meetings, but everyone struggles a little bit with it. So, um, those kind of conversations are definitely difficult to, to start. Unconscious bias is a challenge that lives in every one of us. And unconscious biases are basically ways of thinking that we have within ourselves that we don't even realize that are unconscious. Things that we've learned or picked up when we grew up. Some blatant racism that we don't even realize is racism because it just lives in the back of our minds and influences the way that we are thinking without us even noticing. Systemic discrimination is something that is also very present in a lot of different societies nowadays. I would say all of them. And it makes it difficult for marginalized people because they do not have the same kind of opportunities that others might have. 
And even though we as a team might be inclusive and make them feel welcomed, there are still a lot of things that might go on in their homes that affects them in different ways that we might not even notice. And change management is also a very difficult point when it comes to a standing team, a long-standing team, and suddenly a new person comes in that is very fundamentally different than the people that are already working there. And you might be met with resistance to those kind of changes. I know that making changes in the language and the way you speak about or to people is something that you've practiced since you were this small and those kind of changes to make in a more advanced age, let's say it that way, are going to be a lot more difficult than when you were still learning the language. So I've showed you some challenges I want to show you or give you some hints on what to research to better yourself as an individual. And it's not wrong to ask questions. A lot of people are afraid to ask me questions about the topics that I'm very passionate about because they are afraid of offending me in some way. And I can pretty much sense if someone asks a question with mean intentions or actual curiosity. And it's always okay if you ask questions when they come from a place of general, like genuine curiosity. I will always be happy to answer you. This goes for me, but this doesn't go for everyone. Some people might not want to talk about their background or their marginalization, their disabilities, because for a lot of people it comes with a lot of trauma they have been going through, through their socialization. So if you ask a question and someone is not comfortable talking about it, please don't try to pressure them into speaking about what is different about them, because that might lead to some serious issues within the person and with their psyche. What's a good way to learn about people or learn about different groups is to actually listen to creators, be it on TikTok, be it on Instagram or any other kind of social media or blogging platform. Because those are the people that are willingly putting in the labor of informing you about their world and their views. So it's probably the easiest if you just go up to a colleague and ask them, but for that colleague, they get asked this same question for the 300th time. And there are so many good resources that you can look up and listen to the people, because I could never tell you anything about how people of color are discriminated against. It's not something that I experience or could tell you about. But there are so, so many good resources to look up. And if you get asked the question, maybe you're from a marginalized group in some way, probably are. Um, it's easiest if you assume the question comes from good intentions. Like even if I get asked the question that is pointed, if people are trying to actively offend me, what I do is I will just answer the question in a way where I assume good intentions. Because in the worst case, I'm a kind person that answers their questions and they are not. From talking about what you can do as an individual, I also want to step into the zone of what can we do as an organization? How can we, because I would assume that all of us work in some sort of team, in some sort of organization, be it in private or in a professional sense. And we can also influence the people that have a say in that and help people learn about the past because there has been a lot of historical discrimination against different groups of people. And by historical, I also mean things that happened just five or 10 years ago that might not be the case now, but a lot of people were affected by decisions by the state or by certain rules that have been made up by the government. And there is a lot of work for us to do to undo those lingering impacts that still affect people today. What helps for people that might not be as extroverted and just come up to someone and say, hey, you just said something that was not okay. People that are not comfortable stepping out of their comfort zone and actually actively calling people out for something they said 
is having regular check-ins. So if you have a supervisor and you've noticed something happening in your team and you didn't want to start a confrontation, it is good if you have just regular check-ins made on a weekly, a monthly or a quarter yearly basis to just have an open space to talk about anything that bothers you or anything that you've seen or was on your mind. This makes it possible for people that might not be comfortable sharing it in a group to still share their experiences. I think that we also do in our company that I find very, very helpful is that there is an open space and a time for us to talk about what interests us. It doesn't have to be work-related necessarily. And we can just tell people about topics we're passionate about. I more or less yearly talk about diversity, talk about how people um, yeah, have reacted to me, have reacted to me coming out, and lay out my personal history. It's not something everyone might want to do, but it's definitely a cool way to share your experience with a broad group of people, avoid getting asked the same question a thousand times, and educate people on things and topics that you're passionate about and might affect you that they never thought of. This also comes into an accessibility um, standpoint where I did a lot of work to add a theme that helps color blind or color vision deficiency pe deficient people to use our monitoring system, which is green for OK, yellow for warning, and red for critical. If you might have noticed thinking about it, that's rather difficult for someone who is color blind to use. And that is not something that I mean, I've seen some surprise nods just now. That's not something that a seeing or normal seeing person thinks of. So give people the time and space to speak about their experience and maybe also do it in a like, paid sector weekly where people just can present whatever um, interests them. Another very important topic in the realm of workplace and also conferences is having clear policies on what is allowed and what isn't. Because looking back at internalized biases and things that we do subconsciously, we might not even think something is racist or discriminatory. Well, it might very well be. So having those clear policies laid out, having all people that work together informed on what is okay to say and what is definitely not. Um, might help people who didn't even realize something they said was wrong or might be taken in a wrong way. Um, yeah, to figure it out and reflect on it by themselves. And of course, those policies do nothing if you don't enforce them. So it is important to also establish a system, establish consequences that are directly linked to those clear policies that we've made. In a conference that might be, we can kick you out if you do something stupid at a moment's notice from a staff member's perspective. But in a business environment, that could mean something very differently. It could mean additional training in diversity, in those topics that you misstepped in. Or it could also be just a meeting that you hold up with people that have been damaged and the people that did the damaging. Um, and there is also the point of generally offering trainings to make people more aware of the differences that we might have and provide education on topics like unconscious bias, on cultural competency, because things that I might think or might take for granted might not have been the same for a person that comes from a different continent, from a different culture than me. And also, when it comes to microaggressions, it's also a topic there are a lot of trainings on and yeah, extensive YouTube videos that might be interesting for a team to view together and maybe have an exchange afterwards. So those trainings might help your team to become more aware of what is going on around them. And the last point that you can do as an organization is actually get professional help. There are a lot of different jobs that center around inclusivity and diversity. Um, the main one that comes to mind is the diversity coordinator, which is a field that is increasingly growing, where people that might work in an all-white team 
need someone to actually help them put up the structures that make other people or people of color comfortable applying and joining the team. And to sum it all up, someone very smart <laughs> made a comment. And I think it's a very bold statement that I made, but I think it's very, very true. Because if you think about it, pretty much all conflict can be traced back to a mismatch in expectations you have. Your expectations come from within you, from your upbringing, and from your worldview. And I can't think of a single conflict in the world that didn't come back to, I thought this was true, this was right, and a person thought something differently. So I don't want to hold you back from the waffles for much longer. I would just want to summarize really quickly. Listen to other people when they speak. Hear what they have to say. Ask questions in an interested and curious way. And do your best to become a better person. Thank you very much. So I still don't see anyone from the organizers here, so I'm just going to pretend I'm running a one-man show. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> well, in case you can think of something later, you can find me over at the Isinga booth in the, well, main conference break room thing. Uh, we also have gin and tonic served freshly for you right after my talk, so Feel free to grab a waffle and join me there. Thank you very much. Thank you.